we ask your blessing upon us today, for we have gathered in your name, and you promised to be present whenever two or more gathered in your holy name. Warfare continues to wreak havoc in your world. Innocent people are harmed, homes are lost, careers are destroyed, families are ripped asunder. Lord, we pray for peace here and abroad. We pray for our servicemen and women, particularly those who are deployed to dangerous places. Guide and direct them and bring them safely home to their loved ones, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Holy, 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 we gather to worship our holy God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us greet one another in Christian fellowship. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Retirement sinking in? Not yet. Okay. When I start packing. I'm jealous. Just so you know, I'm jealous. Three more years. Our hymn today is Over a Thousand Tongues to Sing, verses 1 through 4. It's on 57 in your hymnal. join me in the opening prayer. Holy God, we come this day into this sacred moment and this sacred space, aware that your holiness is always around us. Surround us with your wondrous love, that we might be wise enough to understand your call 
and be brave enough to follow your path. Amen. Our choir anthem is Amazing Grace. And our junior ringers will perform When Morning Gilds the Skies.
children like to come forward for their time. You're a good man, Daddy. Well, today we're talking about a woman whose name is Priscilla. Do any of you know anybody named Priscilla? You do, Andy? You know someone named Priscilla? Who is she? She's your grandpa's cousin. Grandpa's cousin named Priscilla. So she'd be an Aunt Priscilla, wouldn't she? I have a cousin named Priscilla, too. Yeah, she's a very talented woman. She can, she can make art out of anything. She can turn anything. What? I, I don't know. I don't know if she's tried, but I bet she could because she can make art out of everything. And her husband is so good with woodworking that I bet if they worked as a team, they could build a house out of anything because that's how talented he is. And she is, too. Well, anyway, Priscilla was an important person in the Bible. She traveled with the Apostle Paul, and she um, had a business with her husband, which was working in leather. They made tents and other things in leather. And she also was very, very smart. And she understood about God and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit and at one point was a teacher. And so we'll learn about Priscilla. Now you probably have some women teachers in your life, don't you? Are your teachers women? Do you have women teachers in your life? You might also have some men teachers too. All of your teachers actually are women, okay. You know, one who's a boy, okay. Well, I'm glad that it's shared, so you have both, you know, ways of, of teaching going on. But you know, what's so wonderful about that is that this is a woman who was a teacher about God. Besides her job working with leather, and besides her job being a traveler, she also had her home used for an early church. Because back in the long time ago, long, long, long time ago, there weren't buildings like this where you would get up, get dressed, have your breakfast, and then drive to church. The church would be in somebody's house. And they would all gather in the house, and they would learn about Jesus. So that goes to show that you can worship God anywhere. You can worship God in a church. You can worship God out on a walk. You can worship God in your home. You can worship God in your car. You can worship God anywhere you are because there are examples of that throughout the Bible. Let's pray together. For minds that think and eyes that see, thank you, God, for loving me. Amen. You can go to Sunday school now. We had uh, last Wednesday our best turnout for our dinners for the displaced persons or homeless. Um, and um, we were way up in the double digits. So we were very excited about that. And please, if you feel that this is something you'd like to try to be a part of the team, the sign-up sheets are on that yellow piece of tag board by the easel in the back near the trash can. <laughs> you know, during December, I could say it was near the Christmas tree, but the Christmas tree is gone, so 
it's there. And if you stay for refreshments, then you walk by the trash can. So you might as well sign up. This is the time in our service when we share our joys and our concerns with each other and with God. If you do have a joy or a concern that you would like to share, uh, if it's about someone else, make sure you have their permission before sharing it. And, um, and the ushers will bring a microphone to you. Um, one of our ushers, I understand, Danny Boy, is you have a birthday today. Happy birthday. I'd sing to you, but I think it would clear the house. Are there joys and concerns this morning? Oh, Bill, yes. My wife comes home this week. Yay! We're all happy to hear that news, Bill, that Lisa's coming home, but none are as happy as you are, I'm sure. Anyone else? Yes, Carol. Um, we'd like prayers for our son-in-law and his family. Um, our son-in-law lost his father within the last week and a half, and it was a very sudden death, and it's very difficult for them, and they need our support, his entire family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Others this morning? Yes, I'd like, I'd like prayers for my son-in-law, Al Bellucci, who had uh, triple bypass surgery uh, this last week. Uh, he had a quick heart attack and it probably saved his life. Well, that's, I'm glad that he came through the surgery well. Uh, I also have a friend named Joe who was a good friend of my husband's who had bypass surgery also this past week and he, um, and uh, he, he was most hopeful of all the days yesterday when I talked to him. Prior to that, he just was dealing with the pain of the surgery. So um, good news that he's on the road to recovery. Anyone else this morning? Uh, good morning, Laura. Good morning. Lift up uh, Mary Malone in the death of Dick. Um, very sudden. Um, their summer residence on Pillar Point, and Mary and Dick are always here during the summer worshiping with us, so please keep Mary in your prayers. The service will be sometime in the spring, I think, um, but please hold Mary in prayer. Thank you, Leon. Then let us pray together. God of strength and of gentleness, no matter what change we go through in our lives, whether it is a death of a loved one, a sudden illness, an unplanned surgery, the marking of a birthday, Whatever the change is that we face, you are steadfast. Sometimes we feel that we cannot endure. But like a steady tempo, your Holy Spirit is with us, encouraging us, sustaining us, empowering us, comforting us, and for your spirit, we give you thanks. Lord, stretch our capacity to be aware of you in the everyday activities of our lives. Sometimes we are so busy being busy that we forget that our primary purpose is to love you and to give thanks for all the blessings we receive and to grow in grace 
and likeness to your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Prick our memory so that we might worship you with constancy throughout each ordinary day. So that when this day of rest comes, we are fully embraced with your spirit. At this time, O oh Lord, we bring to you our silent petitions, those things we do not share easily out loud, but unafraid and unashamed, we come before you now, asking that you draw close to hear the prayers of your people. For these prayers and the prayers of all your people who call upon your name, we give you thanks, for we trust in our relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who invites us to live as a community of faith and asks us to pray as one. So in symbol of both, we say these beloved words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Acts 18, verses 24 through 28, and I will be reading from the Revised Standard Version. <clears throat> now, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and expounded to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross to Achaia, the brethren encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to receive him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed, for he powerfully confuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, and our, sorry, our hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 66 in your hymnal.
Would you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. You may have somewhere along the line, because it's been on for years and years and years, watched Wheel of Fortune with Sajak and Pat Sajak and Vanna White, have worked as a team throughout this entire thing. And, and you might think that Pat Sajak has the more important job, but I don't know, turning those letters requires some skill set. Well, throughout my life as a child, I was kind of my dad's Vanna White when he would work on projects on the car or on, I remember helping him put in a cruise control in one of our cars. This was before it was standard to do that. I also remember being in his way when he first put seat belts in the car. I would have been in the single digits at that point because he believed they were important before it became mandatory to have seat belts in the car. I worked with my dad on other woodworking projects around the house that he would work on, handing him this tool or that tool. And, and I know viscerally what it's like to be told that I'm not shining the flashlight in the right spot when he was trying to screw in something. Well, later when I became married, I became Steve's Vanna White. And so we worked on projects together because he'd need an extra pair of hands for something, holding two corners of some wood thing together until he could screw it in place. And so I would do those things. And, and I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy being a helper. There was this one time when we put in um, pergo-like flooring, and it was kind of new. It's not so new anymore, but at the time, in the, in the, in the early 2000s, it was still kind of a new product, and we were putting in pergo flooring in the parsonage because the regular flooring was... And it ended up being about the same price to either put in linoleum or put in this pergo-like flooring. So we did the pergo. And, and he got the first row in, and, and he would tell me what the lengths were, and, we would, and I would operate the chop saw and help him put these things in place. And, and so sometime later, we were on a mission trip down in Biloxi, Mississippi, following Hurricane Katrina. And this woman was going to have Pergo put throughout her house and in every room. And so Steve put in the first row, and then he called a couple of youth, and he said, go at it. And I was like, where are you going? He said, I'm going to show somebody else how to put in flooring. We have three bedrooms, and we all need to do all three rooms. And I said, you can't leave me. And he said, Laura, right now, you are the most trained person in this group. And I was like, we're sunk. <laughs> So my granddaughter, Ashley, who was on that particular mission trip, and I did the entire bedroom. There was one part where we had to cut around a closet, the door frame of a closet. And that was a, you know, a, an interesting cut. And the thing is, when you cut the piece, you cut it upside down, which means you have to figure out what it looks like backwards. And I, my brain doesn't work backwards and upside down. It, it, it barely works straight. And so I was really struggling with that. And I remember I cut the first piece and I ruined the cut. And then I went to cut the second piece and I ruined that cut. And I was so frustrated with myself, not with anybody else, but with myself, that I was, you know, fuming under my breath how 
impossible this project was. And I remember my husband uh, hearing that I was just like apoplectically upset with this, that I was wasting these planks of wood, that he came out and he said, do you want me to do this one? And I remember saying, back away from that saw. I am woman, hear me roar. I will succeed. And Steve, being a wise fellow, just kind of went, okay. And the third time was the charm. But when we had to cut the other one on the other frame of the door, I said, Steve, would you please? Because <laughs> I didn't want to waste any more wood, because I wasn't sure that I had conquered it, really, how to do it. Being a part of a team does not mean that you are second fiddle. You're a team. You're part of a dynamic duo. You each have your areas of strength and you learn to count on each other and work in partnership. And so it was with Priscilla and Aquila. They were a team. In fact, there's no place in scripture where they're not mentioned together. And they were very, very important during the time of Paul, the Apostle Paul's ministry. They worked at um, encouraging the church, the early church, in Rome and in Corinth and in Ephesus. They housed a home church where people came and worshipped. They worked with when Paul was trying to you know, earn a living so he wasn't dependent upon the funds of the church. Paul worked in leather. He was a tent maker. He, he, they owned a, a leather business. And so he and Priscilla and Aquila worked together. They even traveled on a missionary trip together. They were an important team. And there's nothing in there that suggests that she was not equally engaged in the work that they did and in the ministry that they did throughout their time together. There is a part that we listed today about a man named Apollos who was a fairly new Christian. He knew about John the Baptist and he was fairly new and he was preaching and Priscilla and Aquila go up to him and instruct him on a more accurate theology. So what we know from that little sentence of scripture is that she and her husband were also theologians. They were so respected that he changed his manner of preaching and teaching and was more effective in his ministry throughout the region where he served. Anyone who's been a part of a team knows that every player matters. And anyone that's been part of this sort of dynamic duo knows how important it is and how we learn to lean on each other's strengths. My husband was a person who dealt, who was every answer, every question he answered in a test called the Myers-Briggs exam, he answered them intuitively. He was completely disregarding of facts. He just had an intuitive sense, a, a gut check that was always accurate. He could go into a room, into a meeting, and he would know how the meeting was going to turn out before anyone said a word, especially if it was something that there was some tension involved. He just knew because he could pick up the energy of everybody else in the room. It was really quite extraordinary. And I learned to trust in that. I tend to deal more in empirical evidence. I tend to deal in facts. 
And so there were times when it was really helpful for me to work on the details of things because he would just need sometimes, sometimes you need to know facts. Like you need to know what day you're traveling and you need to know your flight information and you, you need to know if you have a passport and there are things you need to know and there are factual things and that was always my job to take care of those details. Well, Priscilla and Aquila were such a team, and there's nothing in Scripture that suggests that they weren't shared in their power and in their leadership. You can be a powerful person and still part of an important team, and so was Priscilla. Now, let's recap all that she did with her husband. They owned a business. They did missionary trips. Their home was opened up to be one of the very early churches. They were a theologian who helped someone new in ministry learn a better way and a better understanding, a more accurate understanding of Jesus' role in salvation history. They were commended by Paul uphill and down, for being important co-workers with him in the time of the early church. Yes, they were a team, but she was half of that team, and in so doing, she deserved to be recognized today. Amen. And it's time for our offertory.
creation. We offer to you, O oh God, a portion of our wealth, a larger portion of our hands, a full portion of our hearts. Please receive these gifts and bless them. Put all to good use for the work of your kingdom. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 88, Maker in Whom We Live. Christ who redeems our life, in the name of the Holy Spirit that sustains us in life, go forth from this place, be renewed and at peace. Amen. Amen.